Hello and welcome to TechFunnel.com's interview series. My name is Danny White and today we have the opportunity to talk to Suzanne Lucas. Suzanne spent 10 years in corporate human resources where she hired, fired, managed the numbers and double checked with lawyers. She currently is a top global HR influencer who writes and speaks about making work better for everyone. You can check out her insightful blog at EvilHRLady.com. Welcome Suzanne, thanks for joining us today. It's lovely to be here. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about yourself and how you arrived at creating your blog, EvilHRLady.com. Well, I grew up reading Dear Abby and Ann Landers and Miss Manners. Mm -hmm. And I always loved these advice columns and I always wanted to do that. And when blogging started to become a thing, I said, hey, wait, I can do that now. I can just create my own advice column. And so I started writing um, about HR and answering people's questions and writing about the things that I was passionate about in human resources, just as a kind of a fun side project. And at the time when I started, I was working for a pharmaceutical company and pharmaceuticals tend to be a bit conservative. So I was doing it anonymously because I didn't think that they would like it all that much if they knew um, but now it started out as a side project and now it's grown into a career. Awesome. So you created this blog out of a misconception that a lot of people have about HR professionals being labeled as evil. What are some of the other myths that um, people often believe about HR? Well, I don't think it's actually a myth. HR can be quite evil. Um, <laughs> if you especially look at the problems in recruiting, um, things like ghosting candidates and letting people hang for months on end. That's pretty evil. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at how businesses treated sexual harassment complaints for a very long time, that was kind of evil. So there are some things that HR does really poorly and has earned that reputation as being evil. But other things are just misconceptions that people have. For instance, a lot of times people think that HR is there to advocate for the employees. Well, HR is there to help the business and often the best way to help the business is to make sure that the employees get what they need and the proper training and the proper pay and good management and all of those things but it doesn't always mean taking the employee's side when there comes a conflict between employees and management mm -hmm. so that can be kind of confusing to people they're not quite sure what the role of hr is gotcha so you gave a very interesting um ted talk once called forget talent and get to work in which you suggest that employers should focus more on skills and not just on talent itself. So why is that? Well, it comes from this, this idea of talent is something that you either have or you don't have. You're born with it. And when we talk about talent in the workplace, we tend to want to find people that are perfect. Mm -hmm. And we create these huge lists of qualifications for a job and then complain that there's a talent shortage. When in reality, just about anybody can learn to do just about anything with the proper training. And so if you look at someone that has 30 of the 40 qualifications that you want, that person probably can learn the other 10. Mm -hmm. All it needs is some training and development from your side. And just because someone is talented doesn't mean they're a hard worker or that they'll add benefit to your business. You mm -hmm. need someone that's willing to work and that has experience. Talent isn't enough. We need work and skills. Definitely agreed. Um, so can employers change their mindsets when they're reviewing resumes for skill development um, as opposed to just natural talent? Are there some ways that they can do that consciously? Well, consciously, first of all, what they need is a recruiter that understands what it takes to learn to do the job, not just to do the job. Mm -hmm. And that can be a little bit more difficult. Because if you say, oh, I need somebody that knows this programming language, a recruiter needs to also know that this other programming language is similar and someone that can do that one can probably learn this one that you need rather rapidly. Mm -hmm. And that takes a higher level of recruiting and skill. The mm -hmm. other thing that needs to be built in is costs for training and development. If you're looking only to have people that can step in and do the job perfectly from day one, that's a different recruiting project than it is to say, okay, we're willing to take someone that could learn to do this job within six months. 
Um, so then you need to develop in training and learning time as well. It just changes the whole picture. It really needs to be a conscious decision, but it's absolutely possible. Cool. What's one question that you find yourself answering over and over again from HR professionals or executives or even employee relationship managers? Questions that I get that I answer over and over again, um, a lot of questions about pay and mm -hmm. salary exemptions. When can I deduct from someone? Um, do I have to pay someone this? Can someone use their PTO or their paid time off? Um, those questions come up a lot. Another question that comes up a lot um, is around relocation. Mm -hmm. and the costs and the reimbursements and what happens if I quit before those. Those are two things that come up all of the time. Gotcha. Very cool. Um, so and what are some ways in which human resources can, can communicate better with other departments within um, organizations and even with their current and potential employees? First of all, it's so critical that human resources people understand the business. And that's something that a lot of people don't take the time to do. I was lucky enough to have my first professional human resources job at Wegmans, which you'll always see them in the top 100 companies to work for and frequently in the top one or two slots. And one of the reasons I think they're such a great company to work for is that all of their human resources people and all of their accounting people and everybody spends time in the grocery store. So I was hired to be a human resources analyst, the desk job, you know, sitting in front of a computer, mm -hmm. but I had to go into the stores. I had to run a cash register. I had to sell fish. I had to stock shelves and do produce. I did pizza and subs. I did everything okay. uh, in, a, in a few weeks rotation. Mm -hmm. And then that changed how I saw my report. Suddenly it made sense to me why this department had higher turnover than another department because I'd worked in that. My goodness, it was a difficult job. Mm -hmm. And it gives you this better view and a better understanding. And I think that's really critical for all of human resources. You can't really support your research and development people if you've never set foot in a lab. Right. I mean, and naturally, I can go stock shelf at a grocery store you probably can't do a DNA analysis <laughs> without <laughs> some training, but you certainly should be somewhere understanding more about what your clients are doing. And to do that, you'll be able to really communicate with them and understand each other. And that's really critical to a successful human resources team. Awesome. So final question, what's the number one lesson you've learned by being in human resources for so long? that you feel some executives should learn earlier in their careers? Doing the right thing is cost effective in the long run. Mm -hmm. And people, that may seem a silly thing, but if we go back to you know the disaster we had um, as all of these sexual harassment cases were uncovered after Me Too a year and a half ago, you can see that if someone had taken control and had stopped, say, a young Matt Lauer the first time he made an inappropriate comment at work, mm -hmm. we would have never ended up with this scandal. Right. Doing the right thing at the beginning is a lot easier and it's a lot more cost effective. Yeah, you may have to fire your star salesperson for being a jerk, mm -hmm. but if you don't, you may end up losing 10 people that don't want to work with them anymore. Right. And that turnover cost is going to be huge. Mm -hmm. You really need to think about how doing the right thing really makes things better. It may seem difficult in the moment and you might say, oh, how can I live without my you know, star whatever? Mm -hmm. You can live without your star whatever. What you can't live with is a toxic work environment. Absolutely. So always do the right thing. Absolutely. Awesome. So people can find out, read your writings and find out more about you on evilhrlady.com. Where else can people find out about what you do? Well, it's evilhrlady.org. Okay. Not .com, um, but they can follow me on Twitter at Real Evil HR Lady. Mm -hmm. Or um, you can always connect with me on LinkedIn, Suzanne Lucas. And if you just Google Evil HR Lady, I will pop right up. <laughs> well, you're definitely 
and not evil. Thank you so much for your um, your insights today and for sharing your thoughts with us. We really appreciate your time. It was lovely to talk with you. Awesome. Guys, thanks for listening to this interview. For these and other interviews and topics, please visit techfunnel.com. You can connect with us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram, and subscribe to our weekly newsletter so you can stay up to date on everything that's happening in the industry. Thank you. Thank you.